PBS Kids. Uh, Chet, can I get a little help, please? Oh, hi! I'm Ruff Ruffman, and there's nothing better than hitting the yard sales. Check out these deals. An old sock? Just one more and I've got a pair. You know, they wanted 25 cents for that, but I talked the price up. Got it for 16 bucks. I'm supposed to talk the price down, not up? Oh. Well, check this out. A lamp, or a chair, or a champ. <laughs> Ooh, an antique strudel machine. Remember, we've always wanted to make pastry out of machine. Oh, delicious. And I've been saving the best for last. A new tennis racket. Well, not new, new, but it's new to me. It's going to help me smash Spot Spotnik in our big match today. Check out this serve. Oh, it's okay. It just needs a little tape. Okay, a lot of tape. Anyway, all this great stuff, and what do you think I got it for? Okay, higher. A little higher. No, but $7,000 is still pretty good, don't you think? You don't think? Uh, Chet, I'd watch it on those strudels. Life was missing its mystique. My squeaky toys had lost their squeak. And then, out of the blue, I saw the phone, and bam! My destiny was calling me. Pitched my vision for a show. They loved it, thought I was a pro. They got my contract back to find, to their alarm, a dog had signed. Oh, I like that name. I didn't wait to renovate. Found six contestants, all were great. And now I'm on the road to fame. I've got a game show and its name is... It's very catchy. It rolls off the tongue. Now that went better than the last take. And here come the contestants now. She wants to learn the electric guitar. Well, until then, there's always the electric blender, Liza. Can he speak a language other than English? Well, he says no, but no means no in Spanish, so I'm confused, Sterling. She thinks evolution is cool. Well, if it leads to talking dogs, I say right on for Italia. His dog, Pizza Boy, can sit like a human on a couch. Brian! She wishes refrigerators didn't hum so loudly. Ooh, it's Bethany! He wants to be the first kid to perform open heart surgery. Well, let's uh, get through medical school first. Isaac! Let's get an update on the scores. Bethany has slipped to six with 927 and a half points. Leapfrogging ahead of her is Brian with 940. Liza down to fourth with 960. Talia replaces her in third with an even thousand. Isaac in second with 1,077 and a half. And Sterling in first with 1,092 and a half points. Hi, guys. Hey, Hi. Welcome to Fetch with Ruff Ruffman. Why do you have a tennis yeah, racket in that? Oh, uh, it's, uh, we'll get to that in a second. More importantly, I have to ask you guys a question. I need your honest opinion, okay? How much would you pay for this beautiful object? Look at the craftsmanship, okay? The attention to detail. It's what would you use? Uh, it's like, yeah, detailed that's... if it's a potato. It's a, it's, I wouldn't it's pay, like, blocked. two cents for that. I'd pay, like, a dollar. Really? I, I might so? pay a, a dollar. dollar. A dollar. I clearly know nothing about this type of stuff, so <laughs> guess I could learn a thing or two. All right, then, I'm gonna make it challenge number one. Okay. This is not the Prince of Pop. This is the king of pop culture, an antiques roadshow appraiser, Gary. Brian, Bethany, seek out the king. Your instructions are in the mailbox. Go fetch. All right. That's it, Bethany, get excited. Oh, man, I, I got this great deal at a yard sale. This uh, handsome yet rugged uh, wooden necklace, only $200. It looks like a tennis racket so that's on your neck. OK, guys, I don't know what to do here. I've got a big match with Spot Spotnik later today, and my racket broke. So Liza, Talia, challenge yeah. number two is all yours. This is Ron. Hey, Ron, you making fun of me? What's going on here? Everything you need to know is in that mailbox, so go fetch! All right, all right. Hey, guys, cool. Let's go. Let's go. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, guys. Now, as determined by the Fetch 3000, Sterling and Isaac have stayed behind in the studio for today's show, but 
They'll be eligible to win points during the halftime quiz show. Hey, did you guys know that the Fetch Fairness Guarantee was rated the third most fun guarantee on television? <laughs> All the contestants will have competed for the same number of points by the grand finale. For the four kids out on the challenges, up to 100 points are at stake in the triumph tally. So let's get the lowdown on Brian and Bethany. Welcome to Brimfield. It's the fabulous Brimfield Fair. I love antiques. This is the coolest thing. You Gary? I am. Welcome to my mess. This is Wax Rex, the Emporium of Popular Cultural Artifacts. Wax Rex Collectibles. Coolest name since Fetch with Rough Rough, man. Welcome to Brimfield. It is the largest antiques and collectibles flea market in the world. In the world? In the world. Rough sent us because he's a horrible shopper. I think he sent you to the right place. I'm not a horrible shopper. I just could use some help from an antiques roadshow appraiser. There's three reasons people collect. The first reason is nostalgia. It makes them feel good. It reminds them of their past or their childhood. The second reason is decorative. They like to hang it up on the wall, makes the room look nice. Ruff has some really decorative things in his place. <laughs> I sure do. The third reason people collect is for investment. They buy it so that it goes up in value, and they make either a profit or at least their investment has grown. See, Blossom, this stuff is going to be worth a lot of money in 400 years. When you're buying, you want to have a knowledge of supply, demand, and condition. If there's a small supply of items and a large demand for items, the price goes up. Do you ever bargain with your customers? Part of the fun of dealing in things that are not in a retail store is the ability to negotiate. Some people call it haggling. How much for that shirt? Your job is to go out on the field, use the knowledge that you've gotten from me, and try and buy something fabulous. And come back, and we'll see who did the best. Get to work. OK, thank, thank you. you. It's time to find some bargains. Oh, good, there's Ron. Hi, guys. I'm Ron. I love tennis, and I've played tennis my whole life. Now, I hear that Ruff has an important match coming up. Yeah. So what we're going to do today is you're going to test out Ruff's racket to see if it's up to snuff for his match. Okay. Do that. It's over here. Look, it's the same model as this one. You know, except it's got strings, and I'm not wearing it. We have to use that? So yes. That's really old. It's not old. Why, that is a valuable antique racket. Necklace. Something. So I'm going to have you hit some balls with this, and we'll just see how well this is going to work for Ruff. I don't know okay. if that's going to work. What's wrong with my racket? Uh, <laughs> Oh, it's awesome. It's important to have power to bring the ball over the net, but you also need directional control to be able to aim the ball, and we've made special targets for you to do that. What, guys? Come on. It's just to help them with their aim. Okay, Liza's testing out that old racket. Over here. Tank, resist the urge to fetch. No. Nope. Uh oh she's having trouble just getting it over the net. Sorry, guys. Watch out for the spectators, Yay! please. That was bad. Oh, no. Yeah. Liza didn't even get one ball over the net. Aim at Blossom. Oh, come on. It's just a picture. This is hard. Yeah, it's really heavy. Nope. OK, Talia didn't hit the target either. Oh, Spot Spotnik is going to destroy me on the court. I can tell you that there's a lot more to tennis rackets than just wooden strings. Really? And not only have I been playing tennis my whole life, I engineer and design tennis rackets Wait, for a living. Wait, get to engineer the tennis Wow. So to find out more, let's go back to where I work, and we'll really look at why these rackets were so hard to yeah. play. Wow, these girls are really excited. Now I'll give Bethany a call. Hello? Hey, Bethany, it's Ruff. Oh, hey, Ruff. And why don't you open up that envelope? Gasp! $50, Ruff, that's it? What? 50 bucks is a lot. And you gotta use that money to bargain for the antiques. That'll be the best investment. That sounds pretty easy. I like your confidence, Bethany. Okay, now I'll check in with Brian. Hello? Hey, Brian. Why don't you open up your envelope? There's $50. And I hope you folks at home notice that Brian did not complain about his $50. Thanks, Ralph. Good luck. Get some bargains. Bye. Ralph, there's so much stuff to buy. Buy it! Buy it! Bro, these are really old golf clubs. How old are the golf clubs? These are probably from the 1930s or so. so how much for a uh, one club? These sell for about $10 a piece. Let the haggling begin. Um, I'm on a budget, so could you bump it to maybe $8, $7? Sure. $8 is fine. Ah! Just like that, two bucks off. I forgot golf club. Wow, that was easy. Marbles. I was just looking at these marbles here. This is a nice hand-blown antique Victorian marble. 
this marble here would be worth $300. Wow. Here's marbles that were sold in 1985. I would sell this whole bag for $5. Offer him 10. Oh, no, wait, talk him down. So what's the best price you'd give me those marbles for? Just because I like you for $3. Yes, rough look, I've got a bargain. Okay, but... The queen of bargains! Back to tennis, anyone? This is the racket of the number one player in the world. Roger Federer! Oh wait, what? <laughs> I touch Roger Federer's racket. She loves him. So when you hit a tennis ball, where does the power come from? Your hand. Okay, your swing. Yeah. And there's How another. much force you put into your swing? The ball like... that's coming in. Oh, the ball! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, so it's like reversing the. Right, force. the ball's coming to you with energy, and it gets into the strings of your racket, yeah. and it actually deforms a little bit, and then when it reforms, the energy's transferred back in the other direction. Would it be transferred back with the same amount of energy, or with like less energy? It's actually a little less energy. Hey, guys, over here. Hey, Ruff. Hey, Ruff. So, my racket, uh, not so good, huh? Uh, Guess I wasted 200 bucks, but I got this big match against Spot. So I need you to design new rackets. Ones that would work for us, you know, average players. Nice. Yeah. And once I get that new racket, I'll be as good as Roger Federer. Bye, Rob. Bye. The first thing we have to do is figure out which category we're going to pick a racket from. I just need a racket that can beat another dog. That's it. There's three types of tennis rackets. There's a difference in weight on the three categories of rackets. Yeah. These lighter weight rackets, yeah. these are called game improvement rackets. It's kind of like throwing a ping pong ball. You can get your arm moving very fast, but what happens to the ball? It doesn't, doesn't go very fast. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't really have a lot of energy yeah. in it. Okay, so a light racket doesn't pass a lot of energy to the ball. The second type of rackets are called the high skill level, and these are very heavy like a bowling ball. And if you can get that going, yeah. then it has a lot of energy. But it's hard to but, get your arm yeah. going fast. Do you remember when you hit with this racket? Did all yeah. the balls go in the net? Yeah. You have to be really strong to swing it. So that's why my racket didn't work for them. It was too heavy. And the third type of racket, all around rackets, are kind of like a baseball, where it's in between those two. So you can get your arm going kind of fast, and the ball will also go kind of fast. Does that so make maybe sense? So we do those. This type. Yeah. Because we're not, we're not really weak or anything. Yeah, all oh, around rackets yeah. are the best for us. I would agree. I think this is definitely the right group of rackets yeah. for you. So they're going with the all around racket. Yeah. Let me call Brian again. Hello? Hey, Brian. Oh, hey, Rob. Hey, you see those hands over there behind you? It's like a bunch of people who are trying to ask a question. Whoa. I need a hand around here. It's like, ooh, pick me, pick me. I'm under a tight budget. Here we go. So could you bump the price down to maybe 15 to $10? Yeah. We could do 15. Yeah. Maybe that'll be the bargain of the day. Now Bethany's gonna try to get a better deal for the same item. Hello. How are you doing? I was planning on buying this, and I was wondering if you could sell it to me for 13. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> okay. Bethany got a bigger hand for less money. You gotta hand it to her. <laughs> so we have to talk a little bit about something called a sweet spot. Sounds tasty. Do either of you know what a sweet spot yeah. is? Yeah, isn't that where like the place on your racket where you want the ball to hit it because it gets the most energy? It's the place on your racket that you get a lot of energy return and it's also the least vibration. Is it caused by like the tension of the strings or like how tight the strings are strung? Yes, the strings really determine where that sweet spot is. Now this is a high speed video that we shot. I want you to watch the ball and how it interacts with the strings in the racket. Strings are the dynamic portion of a racket. They actually move when you hit the ball. Their main job is to store and return energy to the ball. So the ball comes in. Oh, it's it does squish. Yeah, it's like see? flattened. It's like a trampoline kind oh, of. See. And notice when you hit the sweet spot like this, the ball comes straight back out. So what is that going to mean if you're aiming for a certain part of the court? It's like it's going to go there. Probably going to go there. Yeah. OK, so hitting on the sweet spot means less vibration and more accuracy. Now, the second one here is what happens when the ball doesn't hit the sweet spot. It still squishes, yeah. but the racket is the going strings, back yeah. instead of staying. And the ball is going down instead of going straight. Hitting outside the sweet spot means more vibration and less accuracy. Less energy, too. And I noticed that the ball does the same thing, but the strings aren't going back as far. So is that more or less energy return there? Less. less. A lot less. Yeah. So what we have to do is figure out 
where you want to hit the ball on the racket, okay? Okay, they're going to have to find out where on the racket that sweet spot is. But first, let's do some quizzing. Back at Studio G, this is Sterling. This is Isaac. This is me. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let the halftime quiz show begin, but first, a brush up on the rules, shall we? 50 points are available. You have 60 seconds to answer as many questions as you can. 10 questions available at five points apiece. You boys ready? Yeah. yeah. Then let the quiz begin. What is Ron's job? Engineer, he's a tennis racket engineer. Yes, what two things do you want from a tennis racket? Power and, and um, control. Yes, true or false, the Brimfield Fair is the second largest antiques and collectibles flea market in the world. False. Correct. What happens to the shape of a tennis ball when it hits the racket? It deforms. Yes, true or false, some of the energy of an incoming ball is returned to the ball after it is hit. True. Yes, there are three types of racket frames. Name two of them. Um, there is the... the all, all, all through, around. All around. And then there's the and professional. Then, yeah. High skill, high skill. Yes, high skill. yes. What happens to the price of an item when there is a small supply with large demand? It, oh, it, 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 it goes, goes higher. higher. Yes. The sweet spot refers to an area on the tennis racket or the tennis ball. The tennis racket. racket. Yes. Oh, we are out of time. Oh, how Gentlemen, let's check the Fetch 3000 and see how you did. Two questions we didn't get to. Eight out of ten questions correct. 40 points. That's not bad, that's 40 points. That's not bad, that's, that's pretty so good. Bad. So, are Liza and Talia getting a handle on rackets or are they feeling strung out? Let's check in. What I want to do now is I want to actually take and map where some of that energy return is. You can actually map that out? Now this here is a rebound test. There's these laser beams down here that measures the height of a ball bounce in inches. They use a laser. The ball's gonna drop, okay? And then let's try to see if we can tell how high it bounced on the rebound height. 57, I think. Actually, what was that number? 54.31 inches. Oh, the computer figured it out. Inches. So we were all wrong. Mm -hmm. And it's very difficult to see. That's why the computer is really important for this test. Yeah. So what I'd like you to do now is to take this racket and make a map of the rebound height of the ball on it. Okay, so they'll test the rebound height of different points on the racket. They need to find out where to hit the ball to get a lot of energy return and no vibrations. That's the sweet spot. So it's like in the middle of it. All right. That was 73.78 inches. Let's try the side a little bit. All right. Move it a little bit. Try it again. Write down their findings. We could try a little bit above. Yeah, at the top. 41.9. And now closer to the bottom. That was actually high. 74.22 inches. That's the highest so far. So this does prove that like, our sweet spot is not middle. exactly in the middle. So our scale is about 100 inches and getting 70 inches is about getting 70% of, of the, the energy, energy back. Yeah, that's a good point. But the top le got less than half of the energy back. So middle to the bottom seems to be the best spot on those rackets. So the vibration was happening when you heard that racket clattering? You want less vibration. Yeah. So it can give back more of the energy instead of turning it into vibrations. And that helps get the ball back over the net. So let's go take a look at your data and see if we can make some areas that have better energy return than others. Definitely like, the bottom. Were the best. And how about some of the worst? Definitely the, the top. top. You measured about 10 data points. Here's a map with about a thousand wow. points wow. of comparison. Yeah, so right here was the sweet spot. I think you were very, very close. It was about the same area on our data. Yeah. They came up with pretty yeah. much the same data. I have $19 left. That's good money. What is this magnifying glass? It's good to keep an eye on somebody. You can also become Sherlock Holmes. Well, you've got the hat, sir, so you're halfway there. Something like that is $10 with the case. With yeah. the case? Oh, yeah. How about 7 or $8? I, well, I can't. I don't know if I can do that. I kind of, my prices are not too negotiable because I'm very reasonable to begin with. Whoa. But you don't have Drives to. Drives a hard bargain. Ruff, you could be the next Sherlock Holmes. Ruff Holmes. Yeah. Not that catchy. Sherlock Ruffman, maybe? I think I will get the magnet. You're going for the mag. He's going for it. Box alone is worth $10 in my mind. It's like paying for the magnifying glass, getting a box, which could only be used for the magnifying glass. How much is the magnifying glass? Magnifying glass is uh, 15. Let's see if he agrees to sell it for less. $15? Yeah. Do I have $15? Uh, Watch this. Better. He's going to try to bargain. Uh, how about 10? 
$10? Oh, now it's down to 10 again. Rough. Uh, buy it. $10? Buy it. That is a nice Doesn't include item. the box. Thank this you. This is a string machine. To do a racket like this, you're going to need 38 feet of string. Oh. It's actually one really long piece. Can you cut 38 feet of string off that, please? How are we going to measure that? Can we right. count out like 30? Oh, yeah. Okay, so I'm 4 9 -ish. Oh, I'm 5 2. Well, let's just roll out a ton and then we can be high right, on yeah. the ground and measure it. Yeah. Sorry if my foot smells. So that's 5 feet. Good measuring technique, guys. I like it. 15, 20. Are we sleeping anyway. on the job? Okay. Lies is a little over five feet tall, so the string's about seven and a half lies is long. So we need to pick a tension for this racket. If it's like tight enough to like bounce the ball back off, but loose enough so that the ball has some way to like squish and awesome. go back out. Yeah. Okay, so they'll make sure the string isn't too loose or too tight. Put them on top and one hand on the bottom. Really? They'll just pass the string. Lovely racket, Ruff. Good! I'm gonna need it to beat Spot. Well, another long day at Brimfield. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. So let me see what you got. Let's start with the hands. It was originally $18, and I got a bargain for $13. I got it for $15. $15. So you got a smaller one, and you paid more. Well, Bethany did better on the hand. Let's go to the magnifying glasses. And I got for 10 Mine was priced at 15 and I got it for $10. And yours was priced at 10 you got it for 10 He wouldn't let me bargain. How much did you pay for your marbles? I paid $3, and they're originally $5. It has a split in the package so we go back to condition. But just like that, it's easily worth 10. You did very well. That's right, you have to consider the condition of the item. This right here is what we call decorative. It has really no collector's value. But if it makes you happy, that's all that collecting really has to do. Well, it makes me happy, so I'm glad you got it. Tell me about the golf clubs. I think it was originally 10, and I got $2 off it. Made in the 1930s. It's got most of the handles still, but in that condition, that one's probably worth 50 to $75. Wait, what? Yes. Wow. This is the best buy of the whole day. Well, I think Bethany haggled better than Brian, but Brian, with that golf club, got the better deal. Well, I've got some for you guys to give to Ruff. <laughs> yes, dogs playing cards. What are they playing, go fish? Well, that was a lot of fun, and thank you, Gary. You're very welcome, Brian. Thank you. Thanks, Bethany. All right, see you back at Studio G, Ruff. See you back at Studio G. Now we'll put the rackets to the test in a real game. I have a friend of mine here who played professional tennis who wants to hit some balls with you. That's true. Say hi to Tracy. Hi, hi Tracy. Hi. You guys ready to hit some? Yeah. Wait, do we have to hit it against you? Yep. You two versus me. You ready to go? No. Yeah. Hey, we actually got the ball all the way to Tracy. Most unfair challenge since Willie raced a dolphin. New rackets are definitely better than that old racket. Come on, Blossom. <laughs> Whoa, watch it. Easy there, Blossom. You have to ace every serve. You did get a lot more balls to the target area than you did earlier with Ruff's racket. And how did that one feel? It was a lot easier. It felt like I had better control, and it wasn't as heavy, too. Much better for your game. Yeah. Ruff, I'm sending them back to Studio G, new and improved. See you back at Studio G, Ruff. Thank you. Great job, awesome rackets. Bye. Well, let's get our contestants back in here. This duo's challenge was full of high tension. Liza and Talia! Yeah. Hey! Nice. Welcome back, ladies. Nice rackets. Oh, yeah. Yes. Brains and a good eye were their weapons of choice. The bargain hunters, Brian and Bethany. Hey, hey guys. Hey, guys. Wow. Hey. Nice. Oh, stuff. I love that painting. It's nostalgic, collectible, and most importantly, decorative. Well, as Patrick Henry's dog once said, Give me liberty or give me points. That works too, points are awesome. We start with Talia and Liza. For the successful creation of a racket really better than my own one, 50 points for each of you. Yeah. That's right. Oh, and Liza, nice. for going the extra mile and getting down to measure out the strings, you get 30 points. Yeah. yeah. Talia, for your unfettered reaction to Roger Federer. Roger Federer, oh my God! 35 points! Nice times. Yeah! For grand totals out, fetch 3,000. 80 points for Liza, 85 points for Talia. Yes. Nicely done, ladies, nicely done. 
All righty, Brian, Bethany. I'm on a budget, so could you go and to maybe eight? You oh. found amazing bargains. I was wondering if you could sell it to me for 13. Now, you didn't find the lost helmet of victory I've been looking for all season, but you're still getting 85 points. Woo. Nice. Wow. But is that all the points this dog can be haggled for? No. no. What time is it? Bonus points. Yes, yes. And today's 10 bonus points goes to the contestant who spent $8 on golf clubs worth up to $75. This is the best buy of the whole day. Brian. Yeah. 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 Your eye for a bargain means with 95 points for yeah. today's daily winner. <laughs> now, Brian, I have here two identical objets d'art. That's French for really overpriced things that I bought and wish I hadn't. <laughs> Under one, a fabulous prize. Under the other, uh, something you'll think is overpriced, even though you're getting it for free. Which is it going to be, Brian? Object de art A or object de art B? A. 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 I'll pick A. A it is. Then, Brian, will you please retrieve your prize in the mailbox? <laughs> That's a terrible French accent. Ooh, it's an envelope. Read it. You have won a miniature golf Audi. Good for you, plus five friends. That's right. right. Five friends. Like that was right. Five people. Happy golfing, Brian. From Studio G, I'm Ruff Ruffman. You're the Fetchers. We're out of here. Yeah. See you next time, guys. Bye. Bye. Yes, take that, Spotnik. I beat him. Well, I mean, he got the date wrong, so he didn't show up. But if he had, boy, would he have lost big. Oh, and Chet's outside. He's being so cute. He's having his own little yard sale. Check it out. Got some good deals here. Uh, antique strudel maker. Got a lamp chair thingy. Some art. And wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is the same junk I already bought. Uh, Chet, old buddy. <laughs> Can I have my $300 back? Chet? Want some strudel? Bye. <laughs>